Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour everyone and welcome to another episode of the mom hour i'm megan francis here as always with sarah powers cheers sarah cheers megan (laughs) we're excited about this it's a more than mom episode which we do um some sundays what do we call those semi-regular yeah a couple of a couple a month we give you guys couple so that's is that semi-monthly then or bi-weekly we've never been able to agree on this it's not bi-weekly but let's not go into that (laughs) Except that they changed the definition because people couldn't keep up. Just like I literally know. now means figuratively. Oh, get well, off my lawn, episode... people. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually talking today about adult beverages. We actually did an episode a while ago where we talked about all kinds of beverages. Um, and we touched on adult beverages, but we didn't really dig in. And it's kind of funny. I think we just ran out of time. Yeah. And I think we were trying to be delicate of not making it so boozy. And today it is. Boozy. We just decided. Yeah, I think maybe um, it's been on our mind a little bit because we're both um, having a little bit of a break we from are. being very boozy right now, which maybe that's why we want to talk about it. Who knows? And we're, know, going, <laughs> we're going into the holidays. Right. So maybe yes. we should kind of um, explain. Usually these more than moms don't tie into the regular Tuesday episodes, but we're doing something di- different this time. So do you want to set that up? Maybe we should explain yeah. that up front. Yeah. So, yes, we do think this is going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to lead, kind of drive the bus on this episode, and we're going to talk about kind of the rituals around drinking what we'd like to drink stuff like that but we also want to tie it into a more serious episode um that's going to be coming up on tuesday and we're going to be kind of talking about the darker side of that i know that you know this whole mom wine culture and mommy needs a drink and all that yeah. stuff um has gotten a little out of control and while we love a glass of wine and i never want to make people feel bad about that there is kind of the other side to it right yeah totally i think this is actually yeah. going to be really fun i think it kind of it's it's what this podcast is all about today we're gonna laugh about raising a glass and what we like to drink and how nice it is to cheers for the holidays and then on Tuesday we're gonna get a little bit more serious and kind of talk about like you said the the more problematic side of why this is such a a cultural like a meme like yeah you know so um we're just gonna hit it from all sides so it's kind of fun to tie in today's light and fluffy conversation with Tuesdays um it's not like Tuesday's gonna be a downer but um there are some things to discuss about this like yeah mommy needs a drink because kids hashtag because kids yes. you know because kids <laughs> yes exactly okay well let's do the fun part now okay and uh I'm gonna lead so I'm gonna ask you some questions Sarah I and wish I, we, we already were, know the answer can I just say I wish we were drinking while we were recording you know what's this. funny yes I do too I actually am drinking tea and um it's 10 30 in the morning where I am and I have this thing about well we can get into this later too but like I have a weird like I don't think I could drink before noon like I don't think I'd be able to do it oh I can but then <laughs> I could drink. Well, I had a mimosa before. Well, that is drinking. You know, that that is drinking. 
It just tastes like bubbly orange juice, though. But it is alcohol. <laughs> it is alcohol. It just doesn't, to me, it just doesn't taste like it. I don't know what it is. I have, I'm so, and we'll get into this in this episode and, and even also in the other one. I'm so habit oriented around stuff like that, that like, it's hard for me to even think about having a drink right now. Well, yeah. But like, I, it is, you know, in two hours, I'll, you know, it would be very different. It is so. 730 where I am and I just <laughs> took a shower and I have a healthy smoothie next to me. So it would feel very weird. Um, <laughs> but if we'd planned correctly, it would have been nice to record this like in the evening and uh, officially cheers it up. But oh, oh well, well, we cheers my smoothie out, huh? to your tea. <laughs> wah, wah. My tea is my tea is actually making me very hot and sweaty right now. So <gasps> all right. OK, so we've already talked about kind of our preferences when it comes to wine. I know that everyone probably knows that you're a white drinker and I'm a red drinker. Yeah. But let's get into that a okay. little, a little more specifically. So Sarah, what do you typically reach for? Do you, you know, varietal, do you drink the same um, brand every time? Do you change it up? Like I'm talking about your classic end of the night, yeah. having a glass my, of wine at the kitchen table. Yep. My weeknight. And so, okay. So the first thing I'll say, I know we're going to get into our when habits, but on typical weeknights, I just have one glass of wine and I don't pour it until the kids are upstairs in bed. So it's a little different than like your happy hour or you're making dinner. Yeah. And it's just, that comes from a long time of just like not feeling like I was enjoying it when I had so many mm -hmm. kids around. And also it led me to have more than one. And I really prefer to just have one on the weeknight. So anyway, it's after the kids are in bed, I reach for a bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I don't drink the same brand every time. I usually look for like the 10 to $12 price point. So Trader Joe's has one called Joel Gott and there's another one called mm -hmm. Josh. I mean, these are like- Josh is good. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then um, Kim Crawford is always nice when you can get it on sale. That's kind of like the classic Sauvignon Blanc. I feel like it's on a lot of restaurant menus and it's really good. Um, I am not one of the reasons I gravitate to white. And we, we've talked about this. I really I really like red wine. So it's not that I don't like it. But two things. One, I'm very headache sensitive. And even one glass of red wine can give me a headache depending on the circumstances. And also I'm pickier with red. And I, um, I've been very spoiled. My dad collects red wine and been very spoiled by some really like higher end red wines, which yeah. means I'm a little, I, I don't mean to be snobby about it. Like, but I, I don't like cheap red wine as much as I like cheap white wine. Let's be honest. Like you yeah. could hand me okay. any glass of white. If, if we were at an event or like a, you know, a yeah. conference and they were just pouring whatever, I would not turn my nose up almost at any glass of white. The only ones I don't like is a super sweet. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't really like a Riesling. But I'll mm. drink. I mean, if you hand me You'll a glass drink it of anyway. wine, I will drink it. I, it's it's kind of, <clears throat> but I just, I'm not picky. But at home, it's going to be a $10 to $12 bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. I usually am shopping at Trader Joe's, but sometimes it might be Costco or the big box grocery store. It's always going to be in that price point. And I, I'm i not brand specific. And a lot of times I, I couldn't even tell you the difference, like when I, you know, of between the Joel Gott and the Josh and, you know. Yeah. I, it's they, they all taste good. How about you? Yeah. Um, okay. So you know that I'm a red drinker. I yeah. like white wine. I actually really, I'll get like just a, a hair for it. You know, what is, what is the saying? I hankering? Get a, for it. get a hankering, get a wild hair. There's a saying it has to do with the hair. <laughs> um, but every now and then, and it, it's not often, it typically is in the summer. And if it's like, if I go out someplace and I'm sitting like on a patio, I really want a, a nice cold glass of white wine or a rosé. But that, I mean, that is very rare for me. I, just don't think about it. And I like it. I just don't think to buy it. I don't right. think to have it in the house. If I had a bottle of white in my fridge, I probably wouldn't drink it. I, like I just, it just doesn't occur to me right. for some reason. But again, I'm so habit oriented yeah. around the way that I drink everything, tea, booze, everything else. Yeah. Um, so I like Malbec's a lot because I was laughing when you were saying like a cheap white to you is better than a cheap red. And I agree. There are some awful cheap reds, like, you know, like airplane wine. Yep. It's so bad. If you don't, if you don't like think about the fact that you're on an airplane, so you don't really care because <laughs> everything's different and weird yeah. and you're drinking out of a weird plastic cup and you're crammed yeah. into a little <laughs> chair. Anyway, it's like when you really think about the flavor, it's just bad. And yeah. there's, it doesn't, there's a lot of red wines that you can find at the store that are in that sort of category. And they're not even all that cheap. I mean, some of them, you know, I, my typical price point for like a weeknight, bottle would be like maybe if I can get away with eight or nine bucks I'll do it it's usually more in the ten dollar range yeah. but I've had some swill in like yeah. the ten dollar and up yeah. range so I don't know I, it's very difficult so anyway I tend to like Malbec's because I found that they're kind of just drinkable enough and dry enough without being too dry that like I haven't had one that's super offensive yeah almost in any yeah. price point so 
it's safe. Um, there's Alamos, which you can find almost anywhere. Okay. And there's one called Elsa Bianchi, and it's got a screw top, which I have to say there are days I just don't feel like dealing with a quirk. <laughs> a screw top is nice. A screw top is nice. I think and most I of like mine are screw easier tops. To store. And screw tops used to get a bad rap, but I think now, like, it's not, there's no shame in that game. No, and I've actually read that they're better in some ways. Like, they keep the wine fresher from what I've heard. So right. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but um, I have heard that sometimes they're preferred. So depending on the... Okay. Now, if if I was feeling like, say it was a particularly special night or I went to a fancier grocery store that had a bigger selection or something, I might go like there's a, um, I don't even know how to pronounce it, a claret, I think. Okay. Yep. And I want to, is it some rich guy? Uh, Coppola. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> one like, of them. Yeah. One of them. That's really good. Um, there's some, there's some slightly higher and Josh is one that has a really good Cabernet and I want to say it's around 13 or 14 bucks at the store. Okay. But you can get it on sale sometimes. So yeah, like I, I think that sometimes I'm in the mood to just try and branch out a little bit. Um, I like Bordeaux's mm -hmm. and I like, um, do you like a like red blend, like a red table mm -hmm. blend? I feel like that depends on the blend though. Okay. It depends what's in it. Okay. Sometimes those are just like a little sweet or a little wimpy. Yeah. I don't, and I don't really like Pinot Noirs. Yeah. See, I love a Pinot all. Noir. So I like a wimpy to me, a red. Pin, <laughs> I yeah. Do. To me, a Pinot Noir is kind of watery. It is. Almost. It is but I like it anyway, I guess. Like I yeah. fully, and my dad drinks a lot of cabs and pours a lot of big red wine. Yeah. I think a, a one thing that has to do with is whether you're eating. I mean, I'm not, mm. I'm not to the point where like I pair what kind of wine with what I'm eating. I know you can get into that, but I do think that bigger red wines taste better when you are having food of some kind. I don't care what it is, yeah. but bigger red wines to me taste better with food. And if I'm just, if, if I've already had dinner and this is my sit on the couch glass of wine, I, the big reds are sometimes just too big for me. It's like, I don't need all yeah. of that going on right now <laughs> in my mouth. Keep it yes, light. I get that. Yeah. I, I like, and there have been reds that I've had that or um, pinots I've had that I've really liked, but I just, as a rule, don't reach for them. Yeah. I, I like something with a little more chew to yeah, it. Um, agreed. I'm also living in an area where there's a ton of wineries mm -hmm. and a lot of like, we just, Michigan has not gotten our red game down yet. Yeah. Um, they tend to be a little weak or odd flavored or sweet. Like it's just, they, <laughs> yeah. there's like one or two wineries that do a red pretty well, but you know, winery wine is expensive. Like it's just mm -hmm. more expensive to buy it at the source. Um, so I try to support the local wineries, but then even then, even the ones that are really good, I'll have a glass and be like, this is more like sitting at a winery wine. Yeah. This is not sitting in my living room wine. So I want to mention yeah. something really <laughs> quick about saving money. If you're, if you're shopping yeah. at like a typical grocery store, like our main chain is Bonds, which is the Safeway brand, right? It's like yeah. a Safeway chain. Um, but with their um, club member prices, like their card prices, one thing I do is look at the differential, look at the, look at the price that like the recommended retail price and then what they're offering it for. And sometimes you can get like a 22 two dollar bottle of wine for 13 bucks oh, which might feel okay. like a splurge to pay 13 bucks but it's kind of a fun way to try out a significantly higher price point wine if you happen to notice that for whatever reason they're disc discounting this one by a whole bunch that week does that make sense you know who does that here is the is Walgreens and CVS oh they don't yeah. have a great selection but they both have insane discounts sometimes right. which I don't so, I would, yeah. when I, I don't buy wine at those types of stores very often, but I love to look at that differential because then I think, oh, I'm going to try this because why is it $25 normally? And today it's right. 12 and maybe I was planning on a $10 bottle and I bought a 12, but it's a 12 that's worth 25. So it feels like, yeah. okay, let's try this out. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Um, okay. Next question for you. Okay. Cause I think I just exhausted all that I can say about red wine. Do you have a ritual? I mean, I know that you do, but what is it? And is it always the same? Like your weekday ritual, yeah. how is that different from your weeknight ritual or uh, weekend ritual? And do you ever change it up? Have you changed it up? How's yeah. So, okay. I already said the weeknight. Um, and that is everybody's upstairs. It's probably 7.45, 8 o'clock. Not all my kids are asleep, but they're done. I'm done with them. And if, so then, if they come to you, you say, I'm no longer parenting. Yeah. Right and if they call <laughs> yeah. down, I usually send Brian. Um, and so that would be my one glass of white. It is a healthy pour. I will say, let's be honest. When I say one yeah. glass, it's a, it's an eight to nine ounce glass, not a six. Um, and then we watch one show and I fall asleep. It's very predictable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Friday, Saturday nights, Brian and I are more likely to have a five o'clock cocktail. And I would say it's 50, 50, whether that's a, gla a glass of white wine at five o'clock, five thirty, or a mixed drink. Um, like I would do like a vodka tonic or a vodka ginger beer, like a Moscow mule, vodka lemonade. Those would be like just typical um, like cocktail if I felt like having a cocktail. Um, and that would be the same for 
Saturday and maybe even Sunday. And then if we're on, I know we're going to get into vacation or like holiday and that that's yeah. totally different, but those would be my rituals. So I think, I think one thing about me is I am extremely routine and ritualistic, but I'm also, I'm also influenced by those around me. Um, you and I yes. were talking about oh my this gosh. kind of offline yeah. when we were planning this episode. Um, so if like, if for example, we're at my parents, you have been at my parents with me now, so mm-hmm. you know of which we speak, but yes. If the bar opens a little before five or whatever, like I'm just. Typically, I felt it was impressive that it opened at five on the dot. Like that is, I come, (laughs) I come by my, I come by my weird (laughs) OCD obsessions about time genetically. Let's just, we'll just leave it there. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. Glenn doesn't listen to this podcast, but other people (laughs) I'm related to do. Um, It is usually five o'clock, but if it's earlier, I'm just going to probably go along with. I go yeah. along with whatever the people around me are doing, which I guess that can yeah, be problematic. I, but it can be. And we'll get we can get into that a little bit in this episode. I think we should really talk about that on Tuesday's episode yeah. because I think that that is a big yeah. part of it. Like it's easy for something that is relatively, you know, healthy or under control to be unhealthy because people around you are doing other things and you're just going totally. along. Totally. Um, and then you can start to become the person who like incites everyone else to do, you know, it's just yeah. like, it's, it's just a big vicious circle. Yeah. So my ritual um, is that I'm yeah. very st- structured about it and don't yeah. usually change it up. How about you? Mm. Well, it was interesting when you said the thing earlier about, you know, how you don't really enjoy, like, I really like the idea of pouring a glass of wine before I start dinner. The problem is I'm always so busy making dinner mm-hmm. that I don't drink it. And then half the time it's got a bunch of dead fruit flies in it by the yeah. time I get to it. So I, I, that's okay. Like I still like having it and I don't mind dumping out half a glass and like saving after I dump out yeah. the fruit flies, saving the rest. Um, but then what I find happens is I have this weirdly interrupted, like I started drinking the wine, then I stopped to make the dinner. Then we all sat down and ate the dinner. Now I've got to do all this parenting and then I want to get back to it later. It just feels like it either stretches out the time that I could potentially be drinking way too long. And right. it's easy to get in that sort of like, mindless refill yeah. kind of situation or um or it's like that stop and start which makes it really not that relaxing because the whole point is that yeah. you it's your ritual and I think that's point. why I enjoy yeah. it so much is I I put mm-hmm. it off and then it is one experience like from the pouring yes. to the first sip to falling asleep <clears throat> in front of the tv yeah uh, <laughs> and I think the other thing for me is like right now it's changing when I was doing early morning radio um if I started, if I had a glass of wine, like say starting around dinner time, so say like six thirty seven, I'd kind of wrap that up and get the kids to bed around eight, and then I was in bed ready for sleep at nine. Yeah. Now I'm staying up later, mm-hmm. so I do need to like I'm realizing I need to change that, and I think I might maybe go for something more like what you're doing, where I just wait until everything else is done and settled. Um, and I know we can dive into this on Tuesday as well, but like I think part of the danger with that is that we feel something like, even if we're not getting a buzz because we're hardly even sipping it, something about having that thing that's ours in our hand makes that nighttime ritual, which for all, many of us is like the most painful part of the yeah. day, feel a little more manageable or fun or something. Yeah. And it's it's must, so much of it's in our own heads because it's not changing anything. Right. Like I have this glass of wine, I'm not even drinking it. Why yeah. is this making, this crutch making right. my nights better? So anyway, we'll get into that. But yeah. I, all these things go together. Um Okay, so my weekend is just totally dependent on what's going on. Yeah. Like, I don't have, I'm not partnered at the moment. So, like, I don't have someone in the house with me that I'm having a five o'clock um, happy hour with. Although I like that idea. Yeah. And it also depends on whether I'm going out or not or, you know, yeah, so that's you, you have a pretty healthy social life and you always have. Yes. So that would make sense that, like, it would just ebb and flow. I feel like I do my yeah. social life is right now is my nuclear family for the most part and yeah. even my extended family. So that kind of also makes sense for me that it's dependent on them. I'm not going out quite as much. Yeah. And I, it's very likely that I would end up either out or over at my brother's house. So, but that's different every time. So yeah. it's not really a, a ritual. Well, speaking of that, I mean, that's the next question. Do you have girlfriends that you go out for drinks with or do you like, I'm, I'm not thinking of you and Brian going out because I know right. that's just something that either happens yeah. or it doesn't. But do you have like a group of women that you go out and get drinks with? I really. And is that something that's changed over the years or has it stayed the same? I really don't, which okay. is interesting. Not here. I mean, I have girlfriends here, 
most of whom are fellow moms. And there are various ways we get together, but it's not a go out for drinks. I feel like every once in a while someone tries to get that together, but Mm -hmm. The scheduling is still hard. We're not at the stage where we're leaving older kids, you know, for an hour on their own. Um, We do, I guess the equivalent for me would be, I sometimes say hashtag driveway wine. And so this would be, this is totally like a mommy wine thing. And we'll talk about that on Tuesday, but um, like Friday afternoons in particular, the kids all play out front. Um, The kids play out front all week, but everybody's got after school activity. So Friday seems like when everybody's available and, you know, our backyards are all small. So the gathering happens in a driveway or a garage and somebody will open a bottle of wine. And that that happens not every Friday, but I would say pretty often. And it's always like wink, wink. It's Friday. Doesn't matter that it's 352. Like it's definitely it's the kind of stuff we're going to get into on Tuesday. But that would be the equivalent. We don't really go out for drinks. How about you? Um, Yeah, I have. um Yes, now. But when my kids were like your kids ages and younger, more like what you're describing. Yes. Yeah. It tended to be more my family. Yes. Um, or very close friends. And we'd get together, you know, at someone's in someone's backyard or around their kitchen table or whatever. But I very rarely went out. And when I feel like it was always this big ordeal, someone was always trying to organize a night out. Yeah. And, you know, it happened every now and then. It tended yeah. to happen with just my best friends. Yeah. More often because we could be a little more. um a little more spontaneous Mm -hmm. about it, but it, we knew that when we were going to go out for drinks, it was going to be like a night we're making a night of it because we didn't do it. Yeah. Hardly ever at all. So, um, that's definitely changed over the years. Now it's like, gosh, it's so easy. I can come and go however I want. And also being single, it's been interesting over the last couple of years. You know, when you're suddenly single, everybody kind of wants to rally around you. And I got, lots of invitations to go out for drinks, right. like lots and lots and you lots. You could have been out every night. Yeah. And there become, there comes a time where you have to be like, okay, look, it's Tuesday. I yeah. cannot close the bar down. Like that's yeah. just, but, and it, it does, it did definitely like there was a little at the beginning, there was definitely like a little um, rush of it. Mm-hmm. And it was like a bit of a free for all feeling for a little while. And then that settles and everyone goes back to their real lives. And so did I, you know, yeah. it's like everyone kind of realizes like they can't do that forever. Um, but yeah, I would say now probably maybe once every couple of weeks I get yeah. together with a girlfriend for drinks. Maybe you know, I'm dating um, someone exclusively now. So like maybe before that it would have been a little more often right. because I wouldn't have right. had as many of my weeknights right. spoken for. Right. Um, but yeah. 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 Just like well, not that often. Yeah. Um, here's another question for you. And you okay. did mention that sometimes when you are. Um, at home, you like if you have a five o'clock cocktail hour, you might have a gin and tonic or mm-hmm. something. What about going out? Do you drink different things when you go out definitely. versus at home or yeah. when you're on vacation? I definitely do because I I love um like a good an interesting cocktail, but I'm not usually I don't care to make them at home. Um, so I would definitely look at a cocktail menu if I was at a nice restaurant or a cool bar. I don't like things too sweet. And I don't mm. like tequila, and I don't really like bourbon and whiskey, which is a bummer because those are like kind of the hip hard liquors yeah. right now. I mean, I wish I did. And I'll always try. I'll always try a sip of somebody else's craft cocktail made with, you know, I don't know, bourbon or whatever. You know what's making a comeback though? Gin, I feel like is now a I, lot of yeah, craft just, cocktails with gin. And I, yeah. I do enjoy a gin drink. I can, I'm always safe with vodka and I'm good with rum drinks. It's fine. Um, so I do have fun ordering some kind of interesting cocktail, not too sweet, um, and then after that, or, you know, depending on where we are, I, I order beer out, I never mm-hmm. drink beer at home. I think you were at my house one time when I told you that if I ask for a beer at home, it's the point in the night where I shouldn't really drink anything. It's like code for, <laughs> because in my mind at that point, she's cut is, off. Yeah, it really is. And Brian knows. Um, but it's like me thinking in that state, you know, more I don't sounds really, great. Well, yeah. it's, it's thinking more it sounds great, but also trying to like tone it down a little bit, not have yeah. another glass of wine or not have another hard liquor. So in my mind, beer is like a free pass. Like it doesn't have alcohol, uh-huh. which for the record is not true. It does. It yeah. turns out it does. Um, but out, I, I love ordering a beer, especially at lunch or if there's like any kind of like yummy fried food involved. So yes, I definitely order differently when I'm out. And it's usually because there's more choices and more, it's more situationally appropriate. Like what, what feels festive right now at this point in time? Yeah. Okay. So I'm very similar. Um, I never make cocktails at home ever, 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 ever. I have had a bottle of tequila. I like tequila a lot. Unopened sitting on my rack thingy for like four months. 
Yeah. Interesting. I bought it when we moved in thinking, cause it was like almost, I didn't have any of my own booze. Like I'm not a booze drinker really. Right. So when I got divorced, John took, he got all the booze <laughs> in the divorce. I got the wine rack and I thought it would be nice to have just a bottle of spirits yeah. in my house, just in case I'm entertaining or I feel like having a mixed drink. And funny thing is, turns out I never feel like having a mixed drink. So it's just been sitting there. Like if I was sitting at home and I didn't have wine and I couldn't, like my legs were broken and I couldn't leave and all I could have. <laughs> this is the saddest is hypothetical ever. I know. Broken well, legs okay. and no wine. <laughs> I just, I would just, I guess, go to bed. You I just, just wouldn't die? have anything. I would. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't have tequila, which is weird because when I go out, I love tequila. I think it's like, you know, it's like when a salad is so much better when somebody else prepares when it. else someone else makes it. Yeah. So if I'm at a, if I'm at a fancy restaurant, I will definitely look at the cocktail menu. I will very rarely order off of it. I still typically, because when I'm at a restaurant, I'm also interested in the wine menu and I'm yeah. also interested in all the wines I don't drink at home. I'm like, I, think I might I've splurge only, a little bit. I've only seen you order a margarita ever in all the times we've yep. been. I think that's the only cocktail that I've seen you order. I do like margaritas. Um, but here's the thing I'm finding that as the older I get, tequila is starting to kind of mess with my stomach a little mm, bit mm-hmm. and I really like it. Like I, I like Palomas are good. Um, I like a tequila soda, like with lime. I just find it to be an interesting flavor, but I, um, I, it does like, if I have more than one tequila drink, my stomach will be messed up. I need to so, register my yeah. hatred of tequila. Just real. I, okay. It's just, yeah, it's just been it. registered and people, then people say, Oh, but you can't taste it if it's a really good smooth one or you, you'll like it, you know, in this mixed drink, you can hardly taste it. I can always taste it. And I've never, met one that I didn't hate. It's got a very specific flavor. Like it's definitely flavory, not like a vodka where right. it can hide. And that's why, honestly, I don't really like vodka. I find that vodka is dangerous. I can't taste it in anything. Right. And I just, I, I get like weirded out by that when I, right. That's one reason I like wine so much is it's so I can totally tell what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> with beer, I will have a beer like at a brewery every now and then there's that restaurant in town that you went to with mm-hmm. the pizza place that has the huge, schooners of beer they oh, call yeah, them schooners yeah. are like a 20 ounce and they, they're frosty mugs yeah. and they're fun because they're huge you can yeah. hold, you have to hold them with two hands I'll do that sometimes but it's not like I'm not a beer drinker um every now and then I will have a beer at home like if it's hot and I want to go sit on my porch but I mean that's like twice a year yeah. maybe so yeah. just not a thing vacation is a little different I guess vacation I'd be more likely to be like sipping some kind of weird you know fruity drink by a poolside or something yeah um, I mean it always sounds good but don't you find that eventually you're gonna find your way back to the things you really yes. enjoy oh yeah you know it's like you just try it out and then you're like yeah I then- do like a mojito that is like the one vacation oh, ooh, drink I that I, I really would never order if I wasn't a pool like by the pool yeah and it is really tasty a good mojito yeah it is good um I will also say that I'll, all bets are off and all the rules change if I'm in a dive bar <laughs> Which I go to dive bars more than you think. that's just like a good slogan in general. All bets are off if I'm in a dive bar. Like across the board. Well, we, you know, I live in a small town and a lot of the nicer restaurants don't keep very good um, non-summer hours. Right. Like everything kind of shuts down around this time of year. And so, you know, if I'm, if it's like a Saturday night and I want to go out for a drink with a friend, I might end up someplace that's open later. And that typically is a divey place. And I don't trust, I'm not going to drink their wine. Right. No way. And they don't have craft beer. So in that case, I would be more likely to have either Corona or Modelo. Okay. Because they're kind of safe. Or a rum and coke. Which I would never drink a rum and coke in any other situation. Okay. That's the funny thing. But it's yeah. just safe. Like, I know yeah. they're going to have Bacardi or something. It's going to be fine. Coke yeah. is Coke. Yeah. It's kind of, it's not a wild card. Yeah. Um, it's fairly predictable. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a... Well, those are, there's like a lot of little rules that we have around these things. I love I it. didn't even really realize in my head that I had until I we started talking it. about it. Well, right. let's take a quick break. Um, and then when we come back, we're just going to do kind of like a quick lightning round of questions. Um, I don't know that it'll take as much time to get through them as it did this. Turns out we have a lot to say. Eh? We do. <laughs> Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. 
And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh yeah, Megan, I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. All right, ready to get back in? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Sarah, I have some. I have a few questions I'm going to rattle off at you. Okay. Uh, it's not exactly lightning round. Like You don't have to feel like you have to answer really fast, but um, they probably aren't going to be super in-depth answers. We, we touched on this before, but I'm always curious because part of what I love about alcoholic beverages is the alcohol. And part mm-hmm. of what I love is that the alcohol gives it a very distinctive flavor, like mm-hmm. an adult flavor, right? So I really do love the taste of a cocktail, mm-hmm. but I love the ritual of the glass of wine more than I love, like, I, I love the ritual of the glass of wine more than I love what's going on when I'm drinking it, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. So here's a question for you. If you're home one evening and you had a choice between a cocktail, you wouldn't usually drink at home. So one of those like craft ones that you mentioned ordering at a restaurant or something else that you would usually drink at home, like cocoa or tea, what would you choose? The cocktail. You can't have wine. The cocktail. You'd have the cocktail. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. I don't think I would have a cocktail, which is really weird to me, like, because I love the flavor, but because it's so outside of my, yeah, it's so outside of what I would usually do that I don't know if it just wouldn't occur to me or what. Yeah, I think I like the drink, um, yeah. the booze. But I would say that if that cocktail was something I truly didn't like, like we talked about margaritas yeah. or um, I really I don't we haven't talked about champagne, but I really don't do well with champagne and I don't like oh, mimosas, don't. which makes me like, I don't know, a weirdo. You're, you're um, a girl. So there are things I would pass on <laughs> for sure. If I went to a brunch and the only booze was mimosas, I might like have a couple sips of one, but then I would switch to tea or orange juice for sure. So it's not that I would, yeah. it's not that like, no matter what I'm going with the I booze, have to have the booze, but, yeah. um, I think I enjoy, and I'm, I'm versatile enough that I would, if we didn't have wine in the house, I would be fine. There would be other things that would be yeah. substitutable. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of that, when it's the holiday, is there anything you drink around the holiday that you don't drink any other time of the year? So I'm thinking like eggnog yeah. or not like r- us Bailey's and cream, you know, Bailey's and hot yeah, I, I've always wished that I, I liked one of those. They seem so like, you know, I don't know, retro and like festive. grown up and festive. Um, sangria is a fun one. There have been a couple of holidays where I have made a sangria for everybody. And that has been a fun one, but it gets a little sweet after a while. And that's the thing is, I yeah. don't really like anything sweet. I don't like milk in my drinks as a general rule. So I, again, it's back to the rules, right? Um, right. I will say we, when we were talking about vacation, I, I love a Bloody Mary, love it. And so that would be something that I would have. Um, it's not holiday-ish, but it's more likely if there's a midday cocktail happening and football on and whatever, Yeah, it would be a Bloody Mary. So, so again, it's one of those things where like when you're not, when you're out of your normal environment or whatever, mm-hmm. I find that I'm more likely to do things like that. So I will have, like I've been to all football parties yeah, or harvest parties or whatever, yeah. where they're, where they have like hot apple cider. With yeah. Rum. And, and that moment it tastes so delicious. I would never, ever, ever 
ever think to make that. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see how many times I can say ever. <laughs> um, I was at a party one time where they someone had made like hot mulled wine. Uh huh. I thought it sounded really disgusting. I tasted it. It was actually pretty good. It's good. I've, I've had mulled wine that I enjoyed. Yeah. And those are nice because it's probably something you're not going to like drink a whole bunch of. You just get to sip yeah. on and it's. Yep. It, yeah. It's like having an exotic food or something. It's if someone right. else has made it or brought it or ordered it to the table, then there's no harm yeah. in trying. And every now and then, like maybe again, once a year, I'll be like, oh, you know, what sounds good as like a hot toddy or a Bailey's in um, a hot chocolate or something like that, like yeah. a hot, sweet, boozy drink. And I'll have one probably a year. And in that moment, it's great. And then I never think about it any other time. Can so I tell just, you what we used yeah. to bring to football games in yeah. college? Um, sure. Is hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. But oh, like, I used to do that too. <laughs> not football games, but just whatever. But the memory of it, like you could probably do something like that now in a really upscale grown up way. Yes. But my memory of it is, of course, the hot chocolate was from packets with hot water right? where it doesn't even mix together properly, you know, and like nobody's yeah, yeah. There's, you have, like, clumps. Yes, the clumps. And then way too much cheap peppermint schnapps. And then I remember Oof. putting it in like to go tumblers, you know, like like you would. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Oh. So I, yeah, I think funny. I need a, it would be great to have an elevated kind of warm, sweet winter drink. I think I've just never found one that didn't remind me of just too many, too late nights or too early mornings or whatever, all the things. So you don't drink mudslides either, I'm assuming. Oh God, that sounds so <laughs> bad. <laughs> either. What's the one with Kahlua? Not a mudslide. What's that other one? There's like a Kahlua drink that people really love. Irish coffee? Um, maybe that's it. Well, Irish coffee is know. just coffee. Oh, no, that's just Bailey's, yeah. right? Or, or, or no, or that's no just, Jameson, that, like whiskey. Uh, Jameson, right? Yeah. Oh, um, I, this was not on my list. But do you ever do a shot? Have you done a shot? Yeah. Anytime recently? In, yeah. Uh, you know, the the number of times in the last five years is a lot less. I think the last time was probably two years ago at a sixtieth birthday for a family friend with my family. If I do shots, it's usually with my fam, like my extended family. Yeah. My mom really likes tequila shots. Shout out, mom. I'm sure she's listening. Um. So I'm not opposed to shots, but the the opportunities to do them have gotten a lot less. I did quite a few shots in my 20s. I would say for me, the shots have become a uh, diminishing return situation. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think they probably because, always were that way, but maybe yeah, you realize. I'm sure you're right. Like, I like, I kind of think it's really fun. I think it's really fun to be out with people and have like a big, like bunch of shots delivered and everyone's like, there is oh, nothing more fun. It feels it, that's it the feels, thing is like w- yeah. the point at which you do shots is usually the most fun point of the night. It's it is the problem is that's not always the best decision. And what happens after right. usually gets worse. Yes. And, and I'm really good at doing shots. Like I can do them without <laughs> flinching. Like I don't, my facial expression doesn't change. And like, I kind of get a kick out of that. Like, but I would rather just sip something. And then I'm almost, I'm almost kind of mad at myself. Cause I feel like I've robbed myself. Of, of the, the enjoyment of a drink, yeah. Of, a, of having a drink, and now I probably shouldn't drink anymore, or mm-hmm. I have to switch to like light beer because, yeah, who knows what's happening in my stomach? And um, I have noticed they mess up my stomach a little bit, like more than they use. Like I just get sour tummy. Yeah, like I can tell days when I have had like a what I would say is like a true hangover. It's almost always because there was some kind of shot, involved, mm-hmm. which who knows? Like, is that which causes which? The yeah. chicken or the egg? Is that am I hungover because it was the kind of night when people do shots, or am I hungover right. from the shot? Right, it's right, really right, 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 right. Because shots don't usually yeah. happen unless it's that kind of night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have okay, we ever done? Do keep... oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh, have we ever done a That's shot right. together? I don't think so. I don't think we have either. Right. Oh boy, Put it on the bucket list. <laughs> Not right now because I'm still drinking my smoothie. Because it's now 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> okay, so where do you keep your wine and spirits? Uh, well, the white would stay in the fridge. Um, mm-hmm. The booze is in the cabinet above the fridge. It's kind of cute. The people who owned our house before us were big partiers. Like they, I mean, they had three kids. They were like upstanding members of society, but they were, the party was always in our house. And there's little yes. clues around the way they remodeled our house to that. And one of them is that the cabinet above the fridge has these little, um, the handle, the cabinet knobs have been replaced and they're shaped like cocktail shakers. Um and oh, it's fine. just kind of like, it's just cute because it's like, oh, this, it's a little was their, it's a little this, tell. this was their liquor cabinet. So that's where yeah. the hard liquor is. Um, we have a lot of red wine that my dad has given us and not enough places to store it. So we have a, a red wine storage in the dining room and kind of a buffet and then some overflow in the crawl space under our stairs because we have more red wine right now than we could drink. 
I, so I have a little wine, like a wine cabinet, I guess, a wine rack thing that I bought at probably Target 15 years ago. It's just got like that kind of marbly top and it's mm-hmm. just wooden and it probably would hold, probably would hold 12 bottles, uh, maybe 16 bottles. And it's right now like half empty. What I would really like, it's because I've got like my bottle of forlorn tequila that mm-hmm. is just at the bottom, like drink me. <laughs> I've got the bottle of Forlorn White that I will probably never touch unless I have guests. And Must I have I like over? some vermouth. I think I have a couple mixers. And then um, and then typically I buy bottles of red like one at a time. Yeah. So I just haven't had a chance to stock up. Yeah. Um, what I would really like to have is like an old like mid-century style um, cabinet that has a larger top because I really love glassware. I yeah. love it. Mm-hmm. And I would like to have a nice place to display it. I have some or like cool stuff co- that was my mom's. They have like cute and... cocktail carts now that are a little yeah. smaller, you know? Yeah. 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 So I would like to have something where I could really show off yeah. my, uh, my glassware a little more, which leads me to my next question, which is, do you, are you particular about what kind of glass you drink out of? I am so particular about it that I am the laughing stock of my family. And it is like borderline <laughs> obsessive compulsive behavior. I I don't know why, but I it's very important to me that things be in the right glass. And only I seem to know the rules. Which like, glass? for example, yeah. I am not it's not a snobbery thing because there are some things I actually really like, like out of a red solo cup. But there are other things I would never drink out of a red solo cup. Like it's it's very situational. It could take up probably like 20 minutes. So I won't go there. But I have been known, especially when we're up at my parents to ask to be re re-glassed, re-containered in a different glass. Um, so I, I can't even explain what the things are, but they have to be in the right glass. And it's very embarrassing. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Do you like, do you prefer a stem or no stem? Uh, I'm okay with either. It, it's more about the okay. size for, it's for the wine. shape or how it holds in your hand. Yeah. And actually with wine, I'm probably the least picky. Um, okay. But I, I don't really, I wouldn't want wine out of like a coffee mug or some weird Right. Like that. That'd be ridiculous. But, don't be ridiculous. But um for mixed drinks and cocktails, um, something about glasses that get really like uber sweaty, like with the, where it's just dripping yeah. water on the outside is annoying. And also, um, I, I kind of prefer a slightly smaller glass rather than like like let's say you had this huge glass and then just filled it half full. I'd rather have a smaller glass and have it filled up. Um, what else? I'm picky about my garnishes. I'm picky about my drinks being stirred really well. I'm, I have all kinds of issues. Wow. Yeah. You have drinking issues. I do. You have a drinking problem, I Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, that's interesting. So I guess when I'm in someone else's space, I'm not, well, that's not even true. Like I'm thinking about this and the more I think about it, I really prefer <clears throat> a wine glass that is just a regularly sized wine glass. Like normal. That is like, mm-hmm where the shape isn't crazy, where it fits in your hand nicely, where it's just kind of a, a curved top. Um, I'm not a huge fan of stemless and I have a few stemless glasses that other people really like and they're cool, but like, I don't, I would never reach for those first. Me neither. And I actually Me neither. just broke my last regular wine glass, which is like the kind you can buy a four pack for 12, for $10. Cause they're so normal. Yeah. They're just that's how, normal. that's how all mine are too. They have a nice weight to the glass, which I really like. I don't like the huge ones that feel very thin. And I know there's a reason that those glasses exist. Right. Like, I know there's a reason to serve red in a big, huge yeah. glass that's got the weird bend. Right. Mm-hmm. It, but I feel like with the glass like that, I have, first of all, I have no idea how much I'm drinking. Like, I can't look at that glass and visualize yeah. the pour. It's so weird. And then I feel it's weird when I'm holding it. I feel like it's fragile. Like at any point I could put it down and break it, which I do all the time. So, <clears throat> so there's that. And then I have these little glasses in my house that actually aren't even wine glasses. I think they came in like a, like a whiskey gift set okay. or something. They're like a little, they look like a stemless wine glass, but it's tiny. Yeah. We have and some I, of those too, that we just yeah. bought cheap for all purpose glassware. I really like drinking out yep. of those. Like I really like drinking anything out of those. They feel very manageable to me. Like I can hold them in my hand. And so anytime I go to any place else where I have a choice about glasses, like if I'm at a good friend's house mm-hmm. and I get to like pick my glass, I'm always going to gravitate towards something like that. Now, if I'm at a, another friend's or if I'm at a restaurant, I really don't care. So I'm, I'm able to let it go. Yeah, I think but I, yeah, I think I am too. I just have a lot of opinions about it. You do. Jeez. <laughs> we have to do a whole episode about your opinions sometime on that stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, we have one more question before we wrap it up, Sarah. And I know that you are fairly hangover um, prone. Super hangover prone. 
Um, I am not, but but when I get one, then it's just such an unpleasant surprise because I feel like sometimes it just ha- happens randomly and I can't tell why it happened versus another night. So here's yeah. my question for you. What is your hangover cure? Um, so I, I've had a long time to figure this out because I have been getting really bad hangovers since I was like 20, 21. I somehow, you know, managed a couple years there. I don't know how I did hangover free. And I obviously drank a lot more then, but it doesn't matter. Even as I, my tolerance has gotten lower, I drink less than I did, of course, when I was in college. But the the level of hangover that I get compared to people around me has always been more and greater. Yeah. So that's probably a good thing. It keeps me in line. It definitely helps me make good choices, especially as I've gotten older. My cure is a lot of food the night that I am drinking a lot of food Mm. early, often and continuously that it's not a cure, but there's a direct correlation between the severity of the hangover and how much I ate the day, the day before and into the night. So like, I mean, of course, like a burger and fries at midnight or something exactly would really (laughs) help. And just like uh, having, having a lot of food in my system the whole day or night that I was drinking. Um, And then the ability to just, I can't usually sleep it off because I, the headache will wake me up and then I can't go back to sleep, but the ability to move slowly and not have to do anything. Um, yeah. and that of course, if you have small children, this will just, it'll take the fun right out of drinking. If, if yes. you're this hungover, because you have to get up and do stuff. And of course I, you know, there, I've been there, but I, it didn't, it wasn't appealing enough to keep doing it. So I pretty much just avoided doing that at all ever. But if we've been on vacation or something and I wake up and I'm like, Oh, this feels kind of like a hangover. And then if I give myself a couple of hours to just enter slowly, you know, maybe not drink a whole bunch of coffee right away, but maybe have a little bit of coffee and a lot of water and then like not force myself into this, like get up, shower, go do. Then I notice that it wears off. Whereas if I, if I have to like get up and be a person and go, 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 it's really hard to recover. And I mean, I'm like, this is not flattering, but I will be sick to my stomach the next day if I drink. And it, sometimes this is on three drinks, maybe. Like, I don't have yeah. to drink very much to get a hangover. I've always, you know, you you seem like totally immune when we're together. So <laughs> I'm jealous. Well, I'm not totally immune. And you're right that, I mean, sometimes I wish that, like, it, it would be nice to have sort of that um, that thing saying, hey, hey, it's time to stop now. Because right. I really don't, like... I will get a bad hangover, but I think the amount you and I have drank together has not been the amount. I right, would you would to have more. to go really, really I need crazy. To go for it. And I don't really have to. I <laughs> yeah. can be very yeah. much in control and still feel hungover the next day, which is just And it would bummer. have to be the kind of thing where I'd be like drinking a lot of different kinds of stuff or like a yeah. lot in a very short period of time. Yeah. Um, which I don't find myself in those situations that often anymore. Right. So, um, but I, but mild, you know, I get a mild hangover. It's like yeah. something like where I wake up and I just I'm like tired or I didn't sleep well or have a dull headache or whatever yeah. so for that I'm actually I have changed things I used to just try to stay in bed as long as I could but I have found that sometimes it's better to just space it and get the things in me that I need to get in me which is mm-hmm. like ibuprofen some some caffeine some food um if we're I'm on vacation maybe a mimosa like a little hair of the dog and then maybe plan a nap like maybe plan mm-hmm. to go back to bed yeah I used to try to just sleep it off but I would find that I would just get hungrier and hungrier uh, yeah. and then the hungrier I get the worse it is yeah the food is so yeah it's like a chicken and egg situation because usually it'll help you feel better but you have to feel ready for it like you have to want yeah. it and it's got to be the right food I will say I always crave really fatty salty food even if I'm mildly hungover like all day yeah. even if I feel fine yeah, and it's yeah. like two o'clock in the afternoon and I don't feel hungover I'd be like, gosh, let's go to in and out And it, there's just yeah. always like that. I don't know why. It's the bottomless pit yes. thing. Like mm-hmm. you, yes. If, you have, for... if I have a, tr- if I have a true hangover, I am a bottomless pit. But if yeah. I just have a mild one where I'm like, you know, I drink some water and it's, it's gone by noon. Like right. it's not really a big deal. Um, if I have a true hangover though, that is the day I get a quarter pounder and rice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like it's gotta happen. Yeah, I don't do, I don't do it very often, but those are those days. But yeah. <clears throat> sorry, I've got like a little. I think it's the tea. It's getting to me. You got to (laughs) switch. Put some whiskey in that. Um, I feel like we have laughed a lot, but I don't want to lose what we said at the top of the show, which is like, there's definitely some more to unpack here. And we are going to do that on Tuesday. Right. I mean, like, yes, it's all fun and games until it's not. And I think there's, yeah, we're going to talk about that on Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right, guys. Um, I don't know that we, yeah, we probably mentioned a couple of things that we'll link up. Um, Did we? I don't know. 
maybe some brands of wine okay. that we enjoy. Yeah. Um, and of course, our sponsor, FabFitFun. All that will be at themomhour.com. Let us know what you are drinking and cheersing to this week as we go into Thanksgiving. You can email us, hello at themomhour.com, and look for Tuesday's episode wherever you get your podcasts. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%.